This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're doing a four-way tablet smackdown. These are 7-inch Android-based tablets, some of them being more tablet-like, some of them being more e-reader-like, but they could all potentially be on your holiday shopping list, and we're going to take a look and see which one might be the best for you. Over here we have the Samsung Galaxy Tab 7 Plus that just came out, Samsung's newer, thinner 7-inch Android honeycomb tablet. We've got the Nook tablet here. It's the second generation Barnes & Noble e-reader and Android tablet of sorts. The Kindle Fire, a lot has been said about that recently. That's Amazon's first color LCD reader and tablet as well. Great for consuming Amazon services. And here we have the HTC Flyer, which came out several months ago. It runs Android OS uh, 2.3 Gingerbread, just like the two e-reader models here, but the price drop has made it much more interesting and competitive and it's still being sold at Best Buy locations, so we're going to consider that one too in our 7-inch tablet roundup. First off, we have the real obvious competitors here. We have the Nook tablet and we have the Kindle from Amazon. Now, part of which you choose among these, if e-reading is a big part of your interest, is whether you prefer using Amazon's bookstore or Barnes & Noble, whether you prefer EPUB, which is what the Nook supports pretty open standard. Several bookstores sell an EPUB format that's compatible with that. Or whether you just want to stick with Mobi and Amazon format books, which is what Amazon does. They do not want to do EPUB just yet. They can both view PDFs, and you can do things like pinch zooming on them equally as well. So they're about equal for that kind of thing. I still think PDFs are best viewed on an even larger screen, but it's certainly a way better experience than you would see on e-ink. And they both can do public library books. Now the Kindle has 8 gigs of storage versus 16 gigs in the Nook, so there's a, there's a big win there for the Nook. And the Nook also has a, a, a micro SD expansion card slot. You don't get a card in the box, but you can use your own card up to 32 gigs for lots of expansion possibilities. This is especially useful if you want to do something like load your own videos on, because those are fairly large. Ebooks tend to not be very large. Amazon has no expansion slot, and, and they, they're hoping that you're going to rely on their cloud services and mostly use their content, their Amazon Prime video. If you're an Amazon Prime customer, it's $80 a year. You get free second-day shipping on physical goods that you purchase from them. You get to borrow one Kindle book a month. They have their own lending library. And you also get access to about 10,000 videos, which includes movies and TV shows doesn't include everything that they offer. Sometimes you'll look for something that's really hot and you'll see that you still have to pay for that video if you're a Prime member. Both of these guys support Netflix. You can see we've got a Netflix icon right here and Hulu Plus and this one does as well. And they both have 1024 by 600 displays. Both very sharp, very good viewing angles. I would say that the Nook though has a little bit of an edge for having a warmer, richer, clearer display. And it does a better job with Netflix video. If you play the same movie on both, you'll see that the so-called HD video looks a lot more crisp and HD-like on the Nook tablet. However, I'm guessing that that is really a software issue. They have very similar hardware underneath, so there's no reason other than probably the stream that's being delivered and the software that's being used on these two. So potentially, Amazon could improve. Now, as we broaden our horizons here, because I, I know that some of you are looking at the Kindle Fire and the Nook, but they're a lot more locked down as to what you can do. If you want the full Android market without something like rooting or hacking your Kindle Fire or your Nook tablet, you're not going to get it on either of these two. However, just straight Android tablets, yes, you will. Both the Samsung Tab 7 Plus and the HTC Flyer have the full Android market. You can install anything you want on them. So if you're really looking for something that can do more than just consume some media and read ebooks, these guys are still a better bet in the long run. Now if you're, you're into rooting and hacking and all that kind of stuff, then knock yourself out and you probably have a lot of fun with the Fire or the Nook as well and the cost savings nominally could be worth it. Speaking of cost, Kindle Fire is $199, the Nook tablet is $249, the HTC Flyer is $299, so you're not talking about much more than the Nook tablet here. And the Samsung Galaxy Tab 7 Plus, that's the expensive one in the room here, this one is $400 for the 16 gig Wi-Fi version. About the same price if you get it as a 3G model as well, but with contract for that price. Now the the HTC Flyer is pretty unique, and first off, as you can see, we've got it laying flat here, and it's very viewable. It has wide viewing angle. HTC did a very nice job with the display. It's also 1024 by 600 pixels, just like the Samsung. 
And for 30 bucks extra, you can get this digital pen. Now, this isn't a capacitive stylus that just jumps and skitters around if you're trying to draw and isn't very precise. This is a dual digitizer, just like the big HTC Jetstream. That means it has an entering active digitizer, works with the pen, and it's a touch screen as well. So for those of you who like to take notes on PDFs, write in Evernote, or are graphic artists, that's a big selling point for your $2.99 here, plus the $30 for the pen. Where the flyer doesn't look quite so exciting is the fact that it's still running gingerbread. Now, HEC has promised an upgrade to Honeycomb, and at this point, Ice Cream Sandwich is just about out, Android OS 4.0. We're wondering if they're just going to skip Honeycomb and go straight to Ice Cream Sandwich on this guy. But for those of you who want the tablet-centric OS, that is Honeycomb, the Galaxy Tab starts looking better, and this guy, well, not so much. I know some of you actually like Gingerbread a lot, and you find it very friendly and familiar. It's like your phone. So that really is up to you. Personally, I prefer Honeycomb a bit more, and I know at the HTC Jetstream, the pen works in a lot more applications once they get Honeycomb on board, so I'd love to see this guy get that. The Samsung Galaxy Tab 7 Plus runs Android OS 3.2 Honeycomb. 3.2 is the version that added support for 7-inch tablets. Has a gig of RAM, 16 gigs of internal storage, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and a GPS. Important to note that these guys do not have Bluetooth. They do not have a GPS, these two e-readers here. So that's something else you're giving up when you're saving some money. So if, you're, if you want something that can give you mapping on the go, if you want to use Bluetooth stereo headphones or speakers, or any other Bluetooth accessories, you really need to look more at these tablets. Now a tablet that we don't have here, but is also worth considering, is the Acer Iconia Tab A100 that we did a video review of and a full written review. It also runs Honeycomb 3.2. It has a 7-inch display, and it sells for $349 in the 16-gig version, which seemed really cheap when it came out a couple of months ago, but thanks to all these price drops, not as much. And it, it has not so good viewing angles. You can see with all of these guys that they have pretty good viewing angles. As I turn it sideways, it's still viewable, which is important no, no matter what. If you want to read ebooks, if you're watching videos, whatever, it's, it's nice to have that. Now the Samsung probably, it has the least wide viewing angles. It's a PLS display. It's still relatively very wide, but it's not quite as complete 180 as the flyer is. No tablet. Also has very wide viewing angles. And so does the Kindle Fire. A little bit harder to tell because their default black carousel background just turns the thing into a mirror. But let's go into a book so you can get a better idea here. And you can see the text is just about readable at 180 degrees. So great viewing angles. They all have sharp displays. Now, if ebook reading is important to you, don't worry, if you get one of these tablets here, the, the BNN Nook application is available for these tablets, so is the Amazon Kindle application for these talents, tablets, along with Kobo Reader, uh, Sony Reader. Right now there's a phone version, the tablet version will be coming soon. They're holding that exclusive for a little bit, so you go out and buy their Sony Tablet S if you want their full tablet version of the reader. And there's lots of other readers like Eldico and Lumi Read and stuff like that for those of you who want to read non-DRM EPUB books, all that kind of thing. In fact, we'll take a look, and you can see that the applications are pretty much going to be the same. Whether you're using the dedicated version on the tablet, for example, here's the Nook application right now. We've got facing pages, uh, absolutely huge fonts at the moment. But turn it this way, and we've got very fast page turns. Same highlighting function. You can grab and hold, and you can highlight, add a note, search for it change your text size, change your margins, change your color backgrounds, all that kind of thing. And there's your screen of books that are available, some on archive, some that may be on your device, so real pleasant and easy to use. We'll take a look at the Kindle application. And here it is, again, very pleasant reading of text. They don't bother with the fancy page turn animations and they're not quite as zippy, but works just fine. Highlighting works the same way, press and hold. And you can also get definitions in the dictionary, too, if you hit more. And you've got basic formatting options. For your font size, a couple of color backgrounds, and you can set the brightness within the application. So this is a little bit less featured than the Kindle Fire application. Which we've got here. It does landscape and portrait. You can see here's the same highlight mode. 
Same options are there. Now for fonts, you get some more font sizes here. You control your landscape spacing, margins. So a bit more there in the Kindle application, but definitely the, the basics are there on the tablet application. In terms of performance, both the Kindle Fire and the Nook tablet run on a dual-core 1 GHz CPU TI OMAP. The Nook tablet has a Giga RAM, the Kindle Fire has only 512 megs of RAM. Not sure why they were skimping on that RAM, it's not too expensive. But they're powerful enough to handle video, they can both do 1080p playback. Um, if you've watched our Kindle Fire review, you've seen that it plays Amazon Prime videos really well, really nice and sharp. But things like the YouTube player, missing. Strange that. If you want to install additional applications on these guys, Amazon has the better application store than BNN. BNN's is still very limited, whereas Amazon, they've been doing a big push to do that app store. And if you want to add things like file managers, um, all sorts of stuff, there's a wider selection that's available. So there's some of those apps there that can help you turn that into a more, more full-featured tablet. Samsung Galaxy Tab 7 Plus is a 1.2 GHz dual-core Exynos CPU. Very fast. This is the fastest among 7-inch tablets right now. Again, it has 16 gigs of storage, just like the Flyer, just like the Nook tablet. And it has support for some more video formats. DivX and XFit are built in, so you don't have to download third-party players to get support for those formats if that's important for you. The HDC Flyer, just straight MPEG-4, which is a typical of Android. H.264 kind of video. And this has a single core 1.5 GHz Qualcomm Snapdragon CPU in the flyer, not dual core. But when you're talking gingerbread, really it doesn't make huge use of dual core CPUs anyway. And the quadrant numbers are about the same as the Kindle Fire and the Nook tablet, which is about 2100 or so. So not bad for a single core CPU, but if you like to have the latest and greatest and that doesn't sound exciting to you because you want to have two cores, you're not going to get it. You do get a gig of RAM in here and the 16 gigs of storage. It has a micro SD card slot that's under the back cover here. And as you can see, you have a 5 megapixel camera here. This guy has a micro SD card slot under the little door over here. And we have a 3 megapixel camera on the back. Not bad shots, considering it's only 3 megapixel. Likewise, the flyer is not bad for a tablet. And they both have front video cameras for video chat. They both work very well for Skype. In terms of web browsing, you're looking at the same experience really on all these guys. They all have the same resolution displays, they all have the same Android web, kit, web browser, and they support Adobe Flash. And you can see here they're all running desktop sites just fine. We've got our site loaded, we've got the BNN Nook page right here, and an Amazon App Store page going right here. And they all pinch zoom quickly enough. Likewise here, very fast. This being the fastest one and having the fastest SunSpider JavaScript test, I would say this one is the fastest for pinch zooming, though all of them work quite fine. The Nook's also very good. And we've got the Fire, pretty smooth too. Now, now the, the Fire is supposed to use Amazon's Silk browser technology, which is really a lot of caching on their servers. That's not an unusual thing. Cell phone carriers and ISPs have been doing that to improve download speeds by caching popular websites and images on their servers, but that also depends on having a lot of users doing a lot of web browsing. So at first, when the Kindle Fire was new, they didn't have a lot of stuff cached. Now they do, and honestly, it doesn't really seem to help. And I've ended up turning off this, this little browser feature, the caching from Amazon, because it actually loads pages quicker without it. Whether that's going to change in the future, we'll just have to wait and see. In terms of controls on these devices, Honeycomb goes pretty much buttonless because everything is available down here. You've got your home button, you've got your task switcher to switch between running applications. You've got your keyboard minimize and your back button built in here. So th there's not a lot going on here. You do have volume hardware controls, of course, and the power button, must have, in my opinion. Of course, the flyer being a full tablet also has that. And because it was designed for gingerbread, you've got the capacitive buttons down here for home, menu, and back. And you've got that little spot right there that activates. If you want to use a digital pen, you just tap over there. And with the flyer, you can see the buttons actually move to the bottom if you rotate it to landscape mode, they're backlit buttons. The Nook goes with simplicity, hallelujah, it does have hardware volume controls at least on the side here. Got your power button on that side. And we have the Nook button that takes you back to wherever you want to go. The UI on the Nook is really very good and I think it's more sophisticated than the Fires, by the way. So you can go to home, you can go directly to your book library, shop, search, look at your apps, go to the web browser or go to settings. Pick home, we go right back there again. 
And the Kindle Fire, that's the minimalist one. No buttons, sorry. You don't even get volume buttons on this. Everything is going to be on screen, which can be a little bit disruptive. If you're playing a video, you actually have to tap on screen and pause the video and use the on-screen volume controls. We have a power button. It's incredibly strangely placed and teeny right down here. And that is it for your controls. Everything is pretty much done by the home button. Whatever you're doing, you go home by hitting the little software home button. And it takes you to the main carousel that is your home screen where you can plot favorites. And you can switch between newsstand, books, music, all of these using a shelf metaphor, even applications, which is a little strange. One nice thing about the Fire, though, you can sideload applications on the Nook and on the Fire. It's way easier to do it, actually, on the Fire if you're not really a serious hacker, though. And whatever applications you sideload will show up on your application shelf. With the Nook, unless you, you hack it, you root it, do something like that, if you, if you sideload applications, they don't, don't actually show up in your application listing screen. You have to do a search for the application title to run it. A little bit of a pain in the neck. Obviously, the Samsung and the HTC Flyer and the Iconia Tab A100 that we don't have here are all just straight Android tablets. Anything you install is right there in your palette of applications. Standard Android Honeycomb look over here. And this guy, your standard gingerbread look. So, pretty open, pretty easy. Neither the Nook nor the Kindle Fire are available in 3G versions, at least not yet. There's been no word of that happening. The Flyer is available with Sprint, EVDO, and WiMAX, and there's also a T-Mobile version that's not well advertised. And the Samsung is available as a Wi-Fi model, T-Mobile model, and word is that there's going to be an AT&T model as well. So for those of you who need wide area wireless networking, that's something to consider as well. Of course, you can also use your mobile hotspot feature on your phone or your MiFi to be a Wi-Fi hotspot for any of these guys too if you just get the Wi-Fi version. In terms of weight and ergonomics, they're all very close. Samsung always being the one who's good at being thin and light. It's a little bit thinner, a little bit lighter than everybody else. This is 12 ounces. You're looking at around 14, 15 ounces for the rest of these tablets. Not really a huge difference in terms of holding them, but battery life on all these tablets is, is quite good. It really depends on what you do. Of course, if you're streaming video, you're going to have shorter battery life. If you're reading books, ebooks, it's just going to go on forever. It also depends on your brightness levels, that kind of thing. But definitely all of these guys should go for an average of about seven hours of active use. That doesn't mean just seven hours since you unplugged it from the charger, but seven hours of actually using it time. And you should be able to get through a couple of feature-length movies on any of these. So that's our four-way tablet smackdown, the Samsung Galaxy Tab 7 Plus, the HTC Flyer, the Nook tablet, and the Kindle Fire. They're all available now. $199 for the Kindle Flyer, $249 for the Nook tablet, $299 for the HTC Flyer, $399 for the Samsung Galaxy Tab 7 Plus, and $349 for the 16-gig version of the Acer Iconia Tab A100 that we mentioned but isn't here. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website to read a full review of each of these tablets. And also don't forget to check out our video review of each of these tablets and subscribe to our YouTube channel.